Welcome into Sports Memo's Betting Podcast, XFL Edition, the best XFL Edition podcast out there. Ravi Vino, our XFL expert. Welcome in, buddy. How you doing today? I am doing good, Drew, and we're going to cool it on the XFL expert because we got ripped for that last week, and maybe rightfully so after two weeks. We don't want to be labeled as experts, but certainly um, following it as you know intensely as I would follow anything else, and it paid dividends last week. Uh, three out of four client plays win, a couple of best bets win. Stuff that we talked about came to fruition on last week's show. So, And we do this early in the week, Drew. You and I were talking off air. We do this on Tuesday afternoons where there's not a ton of weekly updated information available to us. So we're giving you the best we can at the given time. And we'll even, like last week, give you a best bet at the end of the show. Um, but certainly, you know, after three weeks, still into it. And um, I think things are loosening up a little bit offensively now. We see a couple offenses getting going here. Yeah, for sure, Robbie. And, and talk about the, the, the first game up in, in last, last week's podcast. We both talked about Los Angeles being at home, catching points, maybe being aside, came to fruition last week. Now they're going on the road cross country here. We're talking Los Angeles Wildcats at the New York Guardians first game up here top of the rotation four two five four two six two o'clock kickoff we got minus seven here that's la laying on the road 40 39 and a half being the total new york guardians tough time out the gate here robbie but uh you interested in getting involved in this first game up xfl week four yeah for new york drew we saw last week i think it was to be expected um heading into st louis we talked about how loud that dome would be how intense the fan base would be. St. Louis really um, wanting to welcome football back to their city in any capacity. Uh, they got it, and the Battle Hawks got off to a great start, got off to a big lead, and held on. I'll tell you what's crazy, Drew, is when you get involved, like I did last week with St. Louis, and you're laying um, nine and a half, ten points, boy, you better have a huge lead. This is not like the NFL. You better have a 28-point lead in order to feel safe because the back door is constantly wide open in this league. Last week, New York put things together offensively in the fourth quarter, drove down the field, got a touchdown. After driving right down the field and being turned away on fourth and goal, they actually could have scored twice and ruined things for a St. Louis cover. And that lead felt as comfortable as any lead you could possibly imagine. So um, big point spread games, just for those out there, beware with these two point and three point conversions. Things can get a little crazy and your seemingly comfortable bet can turn into a loser real quick. It didn't happen that way last week. St. Louis held on um, for New York drew, you know, the quarterback controversy starts here. Now Matt McGloin got hurt last week, rib injury. Um, didn't play the second half. Marquise Williams, ex-North Carolina quarterback, came in, played a little bit. He's got the running element, but didn't really have the passing game down. They didn't really attempt much downfield. Luis Perez, <clears throat> quarterback from the uh, Alliance of American Football, came in, led touchdown drive, and looked halfway decent. So we'll see who they go with here. Um, L.A. broke out last week. <clears throat> Thus, they were a seven-point favorite. Again, I think they're overvalued. Uh, you know, they, these lines are quickly adjusted and they're strongly adjusted. This is something we talked about in three or four games last week. Uh, depending upon what numbers you got, you could have won two out of three with home underdogs. Seattle, I think, being the only one that wouldn't have covered. But my power ratings, and, and believe me, I'm adjusting the same way that, uh, you know, week to week as odds makers are. But I list this game as Pickham, Drew, and they're laying seven points. It, to me, it seems a, a very, very heavy. The temperatures will be a little bit colder here in New York this week. Uh, when L.A. comes cross country to play this game, an 11 a.m. kickoff for their time, Pacific time, uh, it's going to be around 35 degrees. L.A. hasn't played in that cold element yet. Not so sure that it'll affect them, but just wanted to point that out. As we sit right now, <clears throat> I would think New York – as disastrous as they have looked, plus seven points might be a decent way to go. 
Yeah, it's the top of the card here. In I, I'm with you, Robbie. I mean, laying a full touchdown on the road against a, a New York team with uh, at least the running element likely added this time. I, I'm just not interested in laying points unless I'm really, really confident in the team doing well on the road cross country here like we talked about. Um, I'm with you looking towards the dog here. We're talking with Robbie Vino on Twitter at Rob Vino Sports. I'm Drew Martin on Twitter at Drew Martin Bets. The two XFL handicappers here, sportsmemo.com. So uh, we got the full season packages up at sportsmemo.com. You can use coupon code XFL at checkout for uh, for both of them. For 100 bucks off there, try it out, sportsmemo.com. Get you all the way throughout the championship game here in the XFL. Every play release, 100 bucks off, coupon code xfl at checkout uh it's also two dollar tuesday guys check it out sportsmemo.com we got teddy covers top play for two dollars and when you buy that play you get robbie vino's um crossover play tonight his top play tonight and you will get it for a huge discount so check that out there at sportsmemo.com also two dollar tuesday at wagertalk.com for a five percent nhl play if you're an nhl better check it out at wagertalk.com as well we got second game up here On Saturday, Robbie, 5 o'clock kickoff, Seattle Dragons at St. Louis Battlehawks. And St. Louis catching a bid here, Robbie. Open minus 8 and a hook. We're seeing it as high as minus 13 right now offshore. 38 and a half being the total. Low total here. I think it speaks to, you know, Seattle's offense, man. They haven't been pretty of late, Robbie. And, And talking about their quarterback room, I kind of overestimated it. I thought that they would be a little bit better here. Brandon Silver's coming from uh, Troy. He had a great college football career. It's not really translating to the professional ranks in St. Louis. In my opinion, they could win it all, Robbie. They're they're good. They're really good. And being at home, I mean, that St. Louis uh, crowd really affected it last week. I could see it happening again here. I know it's a large number, but it is a home team. And this St. Louis team might be the best team in the XFL. I would look towards St. Louis minus 12 here. Yeah, it's a lot of points, Drew. And as I just pointed out, as bad as New York was last week in this same building, um, they had a legitimate chance at the end to cover as a 10-point underdog closing line. Seattle has to rate better than New York despite their problems. Uh, We talked about Brandon Silvers last week, just the inconsistency. And I, I got so frustrated last week that I had to go to Twitter with Brandon Silvers negativity but um it's not all negative with him i mean there are times when he shows flashes threading needles perfect passes you know what he's just good enough drew he's just good enough to drive you from your own 20 to the other team's 20 and then something fails along the way and he makes a miserable pass Uh, jim zorn actually um counseled him on the sidelines after an interception last week a really poor pass behind the receiver right to the defender on what could have been a promising drive. If you could get anything out of this guy for four quarters, as far as consistency is concerned, then you would have, I think, um, you know, what maybe you and a lot of others thought this Seattle Dragons team could be to start the season. Right now, one and two, they're not out of anything. But they need that consistency, and they need the wide receiving court. It was pointed out last week and really – Once I looked at it, correctly pointed out that Seattle doesn't have a guy to take the top off the defense at the wide receiver position. Keenan Reynolds, not necessarily a burner, the ex-Navy quarterback. Um, Austin Prohl, more of a route runner, not a burner. And what happened to Seattle last week was Dallas figured it out and just crowded the line of scrimmage. Everybody came down within eight yards of uh, of the line and... Seattle with that short passing game, it just wasn't working. Uh, It couldn't generate any consistent offense. So, you know, they scored 12 in the first half. They don't score on any of their last seven drives in that game. Meanwhile, they hold Dallas. The defense played good in front of the home crowd. But then Dallas, in typical Dallas form, the last two weeks explodes in the second half. I think they scored on four of their last five drives. So for Seattle, another loss and non-cover. They're kind of... On the verge, Drew, I don't know what to do with them. You know, I I can see an offensive outburst coming um, with Silvers if he can get it going consistently. But it's hard to project that. I'm going to give you some numbers here of why Seattle's been so good this season. Seattle opponents on third down conversions this year, and these aren't skewed by one game. Every game they've been good at this. But their opponents have converted five 
of 30 first third down conversions, five of 30, 16.7% on third downs. Dallas, one of 10, Houston, two of 10, New York, two of 10. Those are their three opponents, three weeks in a row. Very good defensively on third down. Meanwhile, offensively, they're the best in the league. 24 out of 45 third down conversions successful for this team. 53.3. That's a huge number when you're talking about third down conversions. You don't see that often unless it's, uh, you know, a really strong college football team. 53.3 success rate, 6 of 12 against Dallas, 11 of 19 versus Houston, 7 of 14 last week versus New York. Um, boy, that's where St. Louis is making their money right now, Drew, on third down. It's an important down. I just don't know. As much as I like them, and I've liked them since the outset, this St. Louis team, when odds makers didn't, uh, certainly the futures board didn't, but I don't know if I could get their lay in this many points. I'd almost tend to look at this total being slightly low considering the fact that last week New York and Seattle got the 38 points. And, and excuse me, New York and St. Louis got the 38 points, and I consider Seattle's offense better than New York's. Yeah, that's interesting that this total is so low. But what what do you think about this Battle Hawks defense, Robbie? Um, I mean, how good are they really? Because you're, you're right. I mean, they did let, let their opponent kind of slip back in, to, but they still hung on to the cover. How would you rate St. Louis's defense? You know, overall, Drew, total yardage-wise, <clears throat> it hasn't been terrific, but they made the stops at the right time, um, just like we laid out there with the third down conversion stuff. Because if I go to the first game against Dallas, Dallas completes 34 out of 43 passes against this defense, and that was not with Landry Jones. That was with Philip Nelson, 34 of 43, 79% completions. Uh, they allowed 267 yards in that game against Houston, they did a pretty good job bottling up Houston aside from the big plays, but the big plays in essence have hurt St. Louis a little bit so far this year. And then of course, last week with the big lead, New York had three successful drives in a row in the second half only turned into one touchdown. So I think they're good when they need to be good, but they're not dominating good. Um, and you know, boy, Brandon Silvers, just give us, something and one other thing to note here drew when you're laying big price with the st louis battlehawks i think they're now one of seven on extra points they yeah. finally converted an extra point last week they were over up until their final touchdown against new york so they're not real good in that area and if you're going to lay 12 and a half 13 boy you better get some two points some one points get something um after the touchdown instead of just those plain sixes so we'll see He's Robbie Vino. Guys, $2TuesdaySportsMemo.com. Check it out. Teddy Covers, top play. Also, uh, $2 Tuesday at WagerTalk.com for NHL 5% play. We got Sunday's action now. Two games, Robbie. First game up, 4 o'clock kickoff here. Houston, Roughnecks, Dallas, Renegades. This is uh, top top game of, of the weekend here. Top game, really, of the season so far. Houston, minus one. On the road, we're seeing 49 or 50 being the total. This is Houston. Robbie, what are you thinking? Yeah, this is, like you say, Drew, the game of the season so far. There's no question about it. These are the two best teams. I thought they were last week heading in. Um, you could have argued Washington, but then we saw Washington, D.C. get dismantled. So perhaps they are not one of the two best. Right now, I, I talked about. Landry Jones, or excuse me, Brandon Silver's consistency. I sometimes get those two when you're watching them all weekend long. Two number 12s built exactly the same. You get them a little bit mixed up. But uh, he's had the same inconsistencies that Silver's has had, Drew. Second halves have been great for Landry Jones the last two weeks. And, of course, I think you could write off a lot of this to Rust, a guy who hadn't played in 177 days coming off an injury. Um, but the second halves have been dynamite. They didn't even utilize the running game as much as they did the week before against Los Angeles in the second half. They really went to the passing attack. Run some passing numbers by you <clears throat> where Hal Mummy's offense is concerned so far this year. 92 of 124 total. Best completion percentage in the league for 798 yards. Um, they're completing passes each and every week, whether they be dink and dunk, uh, not so many downfield, and that's mainly because Landry Jones has underthrown or overshot a lot of open guys downfield. Uh, to their positive side, 
uh, uh, Donald Parham, the tight end, number 49, for those who have been watching, um, a, a virtually a, a giant on the field compared to the people covering him. He's about 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, uh, he's been a great find for Dallas and a really good security blanket. It'll be tough for Houston to deal with. What'll be tough for Dallas to deal with will be P.J. Walker. Uh, I know you talked about him last week, Drew. He's been great as a dual threat, and it just makes that June Jones offense that much more explosive. He made a couple of plays, touchdown plays, out of nothing last week. For those of you who watched, you probably saw he was uh, being chased, just about sacked, uh, launched a ball downfield to a wide-open Cam Phillips. Uh, It looked like he was going to try and turn the corner and run. Uh, Walker I'm speaking of here and the defense sort of came off Phillips and came up to stop him from running over their heads touchdown and then another play shotgun snap got right past him uh, turned around ran it down picked it up and then ran it right in the end zone around the corner so two plays that probably shouldn't have gone for positives went for touchdowns that's what you're dealing with when you have Houston here Cam Phillips has been the best receiver in the league by far the Houston pass rush has been really good um, I, you know, both of these teams, Drew, at this point in time, like I say, rank one and two. Dallas gets a little home field advantage here. The point spread is virtual pick them at this point. I think I saw minus one um, maybe to the home side. I can't remember now. But at any rate, I would look for points in this game. I think the offenses are the stalwarts in this contest, and it's going to be pretty difficult for either side to stop them. Houston, three games, three overs. I think this total sits at 50. Um, Again, you need some two-point conversions, but we saw some creativity out of some teams last week where two-point conversions are concerned, or excuse me, extra point conversions are concerned um, of any value. And I think we'll continue to see that as the season goes on. So for me, I'd probably look toward over in that game. All right, we got one game left here, guys. The uh, nightcap on Sunday. D.C. Defenders go on the road again, this time down to the state of Florida, take on the Tampa Bay Vipers. And they are the uh, slight road favorites here. One and a hook, minus one and a half down there in Tampa. 44 and a half being the total here. Robbie, what are you thinking with D.C. and Tampa? Well, you wonder what the bounce back will be, Drew, out of the defenders. I mean, they got scorched last week and in every department uh, from the get-go. I mean, the game got out of hand, and Washington did pile up some rushing yards. This team ran for 200 yards last week against L.A., which is a little different than what the narrative was about this team was Cardale Jones and a great receiving core. And last week they ran real well, but Cardale Jones did not look good. And he faced a secondary, Drew, that was out without two starting cornerbacks. They had backups at both corners, and they picked him off, I think, four times. It's the highest number of turnovers committed by a team so far this season. I think they had five total turnovers in that game. So it just wasn't good. He did not look like he was sure of himself in any way, shape, or form. What will the bounce back be? I don't know. But I know one thing. Tampa Bay was not going to go over in the red zone forever. And last week they broke out in a pretty big way. They played Houston toe-to-toe. 34-27. Uh, depending upon where you got the number, you probably you could have covered with Tampa Bay. You could have covered with Houston. <clears throat> I think that thing moved from an opener of four all the way to eight where it closed. The Tampa Bay quarterback situation is in flux right now. We don't know the injury situation on Aaron Murray, who's missed the last two games. You got a lot of Taylor Cornelius, the ex-Oklahoma State quarterback, and you got a little of Quentin Flowers. And I think the fans want to see more of Quentin Flowers, I know. to tell you the truth. That was um, fun to see. It was a bunch of USF fans chanting his name and everything. And while he was in, he looked pretty good. He brings an added dimension to the team. But I think where the playbook is concerned, you kind of heard Mark Tressman describe it. Right before half, they lifted Flowers on a two-minute situation and put Cornelius in. And he led the team down to a touchdown. They just thought Cornelius had a better grip on the two-minute offense. Um, It could be all situational once again this week for both of these guys. But their offense is pretty good, Drew. It just didn't get into the end zone those first two weeks. They did stuff like, I I think they're the team that ran the reverse on the kickoff. Or maybe it was Houston. I forget which. It was in that game, I think. They ran a reverse on the kickoff for a touchdown. Mm -hmm. Ran it all the way back. Um, A very um, crazy two-point conversion play that Tampa Bay ran. It was a lot of innovation 
with this team last week that I like to see. <clears throat> I think they're pretty well balanced. Defensively, they're not great, but they're good enough. I mean, the first two weeks, they were more than good enough. Last week, they got, you know, hit for over 400 yards by Houston. But that's, you know, that's Houston. And like I said earlier, Houston made a couple plays out of nothing that went for big touchdowns. I think Tampa Bay is the right way here. I just don't know that I believe enough or as much in Washington, D.C. as others do. Um, for me right now, Tampa Bay could have some home momentum. And I don't really care which quarterback it is this week. I'd almost prefer at this point to see the Cornelius Flowers duo in the game. It presents a harder challenge for defenses to have those guys coming in and out of games because they have different skill sets. Um, but if it's Aaron Murray, then it's Aaron Murray. I still think Tampa's um, – got the better better team here so for me i'll take the home side tampa bay i'm with you i think the home team is is the side in this one as well robbie and i agree with you i think cornelius and, and quentin flowers kind of switching off it, it it keeps the defense on their heels a little bit and it uh makes it mo- a, a lot of fun for the fans there so uh robbie vino guys check them out on twitter at rob vino sports check them out sportsmemo.com got the full season xfl up there Check it out for uh, Robbie Vino or Drew Martin. He's also got a free play up. We got uh, best bets coming up. But, guys, the coupon code for the podcast, XFL, will take $100 off full season XFL service for Rob Vino, Drew Martin, or both. You can uh, double up. Double dipping is okay on the uh, coupon code there, XFL. So, Robbie, throw it over to you, man. Do you have a best bet for the podcast this weekend in the XFL? Yeah. um, As we sit, Drew, once again, Tuesday afternoon, Early afternoon where you are, late afternoon where I am, but still Tuesday afternoon nonetheless. And with the information that we have to go on right now, I would probably lean toward Houston and Dallas getting over that 50 points. I think that's going to be an up and down game. Dallas throws the ball consistently. Houston throws the ball consistently. You have June Jones against um, Hal Mummy, two very explosive offenses, and they both have running games to go with it. So um, we'll see if they can make enough conversion plays, because that's really what this comes down to in this league. We talked early preseason about how there are no key numbers, throw those in the garbage. Um, so 50, you know, it, there's, there's nothing key about it, but I just think you're asking both teams to go 25, 25 to push. I think that's more than doable. So give me over 50 as the early week, best bet in the XFL. I like it, Robbie. I like that play as well. So, guys, we got the over Houston, Dallas. Over 50 is market wide, but Robbie, low water mark here. We got a bookmaker playing of 49. So, we can give you the 49, man. Mm hmm. We'll take it. All right. We're always so, out o- looking for that edge, right, Drew? Well, might as well, man. Heck, it lands on 50. You get to uh, cash instead of push. So, uh, Houston, Dallas over 49. That's what we're seeing right now, guys. Two o'clock Pacific, Tuesday afternoon. Robbie, anything else you want to throw out there before we shut this down? Yeah, you were talking about the packages for the season, Drew. I mean, these tickets cash just the same as any others do. And right now, I still think we're, uh, I think we proved it last week, Drew. There's still plenty of being ahead of the curve in this league. While some are zigging, others are zagging. And for us last week, it paid off. I think it can pay off again this week. I don't know that odds makers have a firm handle. I don't know that they care to have a firm handle on this league, tell you the truth, with March Madness and everything coming up here. So um, season packages, absolutely. Would have have brought you home a good profit last week. So go ahead and sign up because, like I say, these tickets cash just the same as, I don't know, betting cricket in Bangladesh. They, They all count the same. They do. NFL sides, XFL totals, XFL sides, whatever you want to bet, they do cash the same. And, Robbie, I would actually say uh, they could even cash better because it's a more inefficient market. There's less for the odds makers to go off of. So I, I that's why I'm pouring a lot of time into the XFL. And uh, guys, hopefully you're following along. Houston, Dallas, over 49. Best bet for the podcast. Check out season packages here in the XFL for myself, Drew Martin, and Robbie Vino. And you can get it for $100 off for the next 48 hours using the coupon code XFL at checkout. So, Robbie, thanks for the time, man. And uh, – Next Tuesday, same time, same place. How about it? Always a pleasure, buddy. Thanks for having me. We'll go at it again next week. All right. Thanks, Rob. Thanks, guys, for tuning in, and uh, best of luck with your bets.